Okay, today we are playing a game on Dorado. We are playing Winston the entire way through, and there is no SR for today's game because it was a quick play game. So I also don't particularly care what our team comp is because, you know. So let's just start the game. We're a little bit late to the party, but not overly so. It's fine. We gotta wait for them to like really get like up part way up the street before we can really do anything anyway. So we do learn basically immediately they have a Widowmaker because here she comes. So I would just immediately jump on the Widowmaker right now. Because the Widowmaker has just used her grappling hook to get up onto the high ground, which means she can't use it to run away right now. Which is a common issue that Winston and Diva will have when they try and kill the Widowmaker, is they will jump to the Widowmaker, who is in a position like this, and then they will then, the Widowmaker will then use her hookshot to go to like the other rooftop. And then the D Diva or Winston is just standing on the rooftop Widow was previously on going, well, I never. How very inconsiderate of you. And then you can't really do much until your gap closer comes up again. But if she's just used it right there to get up there, her only recourse is to jump down into the street where her team is basically, which isn't really where Widowmaker wants to be. And then we can wait for her to use it again and jump on her when she comes up onto the high ground again, or just go around and bother somebody else if we see an opportunity, you know. Um, <clears throat> so we do jump over onto the Widow now. Genji's done most of the damage, so we come over to finish her off. There's a also a, another Genji here, their Genji, and a Diva, neither of which are particularly concerning to us. Diva's inconvenient because the mech has a lot of armor, but she's not doesn't pose any like significant threat to us. So I wouldn't jump down right here just yet because our shield still has six seconds on its cooldown right now. So if you're going to jump into the enemy team and you don't have your shield ready to go, you need to have like a pretty good reason for doing so because if you don't have your shield, it tends to be really easy to suddenly die. And you can't, you just won't be able to stick around for as long, if nothing else. Um... If you end up using your shift to jump in as well, and you don't have your shield, it's like, well, no, I don't have my shift to get out either. Oh, she, oh, Farah finished her off. All right, easy peasy. Oh, I thought she was just barely going to get away from us. She did not. So Bridget's obviously real inconvenient to us as would uh, Winston. We have somebody else over here to help us kill her because Lord knows we would never kill her by ourselves otherwise. She's now used Rally, which means there'll be no fun for us in the near future, certainly. <laughs> right now it's like what the fuck so we didn't manage to kill him we do have primal rage we just got nano boosted didn't have our jump up and uh can't really see a squishy target to jump onto right now either so we end up not doing very much with the nano boost and now we're using primal rage to harass these people the thing is they're just winning the checkpoint behind us right now while this is happening and Obviously, as being the, one of the main tank of our team, we should be more concerned with them pushing the payload to the checkpoint, because we need to actually go over there and contest that, really. Uh, so we've used Primal Rage now, basically just to kill people, but they've already captured the checkpoint, so us killing these people doesn't really accomplish that much, because we've uh, uh, they've already captured the checkpoint. So they're just going to come out and then immediately start pushing again. Sam, I've been killing the Widow. Uh, the question in the email is about Widowmaker principally, and so far we have been harassing the uh, Widow a lot. I don't think their Widowmaker has gotten any kills, has she? She might have gotten like one or two. Um, people just like to complain, is the moral of the story. Especially if they play Overwatch, because they're uh, probably a big old baby. So, oh, right on Widowmaker's head, she was looked down her scope, and then suddenly we're on top of her. We have jumped in again without our shield up, which can lead to sadness, especially if there's an Anna around, because if you don't have your shield, it makes it easier for the Anna to either grenade you or trank you. So we're currently looking for Widowmaker. I don't know where Widowmaker is right now. She was either probably above us or just sitting real far back, but she didn't shoot at us, so I don't know where she went to. Maybe she died and I didn't see it. Also possible. I'm not going to go back and agonize over it too much. So now they have a Mercy. Uh, we obviously want to kill Mercy also as Winston. But right now we're busy trying to kill the Widowmaker, who has spent a lot of time running away from us so far. So that's been going good. We have... Uh, where, why do we, where do we use our jump here? Just to jump on top of the Widowmaker? Did we really need to? Because that's ended up putting us in an unfortunate position now. 
Did we really need? No, we did not need to jump on the Widowmaker right here. It did a little bit of extra damage from the landing, but we didn't need to jump right there. We were already in Tesla cannon range, and then because we jumped on Widowmaker a second ago, we don't have our jump to get back out until it's already too late. And we were sadly, agonizingly close to having Primal Rage, but didn't quite manage to get it. Um, didn't need to jump on the Widow, so we could have gotten out with that one if we still had our jump. Or we could have followed the Widow as well, because she grappled away from us, and we didn't have our jump to follow her either. We were getting harassed, though, by that point, so we probably would have wanted to disengage even if we could, fo could have followed her. But either way, we didn't need to use our jump there. So we do have Primal Rage right now. Uh, good ultimate. Here's Bridget. Bridget's very inconvenient for us. Not much point to putting the bubble down right there. It's not really going to save us from anything. It's, like, it's not going to stop Bridget, and it's not really in a position to achieve much of anything, because the bubble in light the choke point doesn't accomplish anything. It's too fragile to really do anything blocking-wise, so now we just didn't have it for a while, and we would, would like to jump in. Remember? Do you remember? <laughs> do you remember the dark time? This was before Arissa got released, where Winston's bubble cooldown would not start until the bubble had ended. And then they put uh, Arissa in the game, and her shield doesn't work like that at all. Because it just, as soon as you put the shield down, cooldown starts ticking. So everybody went, um, why doesn't Winston's shield work like this? Why does he have to wait for it to be broken before he can put it, uh, to have the cooldown start again? God, dark times, dark times. Overwatch used to be so fucked up when it came out, like, after launch. It's just so much better than it was now. Like, can you remember? Can you believe there was a point in time where Zenyatta had 150 hit points and Transcendence didn't have a speed boost on it? And before that, there was a time when the Harmony and Discord orbs would just stay on people forever. There was They didn't break off from line of sight. So if just somebody put a Discord orb on you, uh, you were f sad for as long as Zenyatta wanted you to be sad. And Tracer was actually invincible. So it was it was dark times. Then uh, McCree's Fan the Hammer used to do 420 damage, which has to have been a joke, doesn't it? And there was also a point in time when he had no fall-off damage. They nerfed that at launch, so he had the fall-off damage with the Red Fan the Hammer did 420 damage. Then they reversed that later, nerfed Fan the Hammer, and rebuffed his fall-off distance. They went, shit, now he's just, like, better than Widowmaker. I better fix that one. Um, there was a point in time in beta when the Fan the Hammer did 420 damage, and he didn't have fall-off damage. So... God, the game was so fucked up. Defense Matrix used to not be a resource, it used to just be like a 12 second cooldown. <laughs> she couldn't fire her guns when she was boosting towards you. Um, she used to only have 500 hit points as well, didn't she? Um, I think more of it used to be health than it is now as well, I'm not sure on that one. This game was so fucked up. Could stack heroes, could just have six tracers if you really wanted to. Just, oh my god, this game was so fucked up. So much better now than it was. It's always, it's always Zenyatta that I think about whenever I'm like, god, this game was so fucked up. I always just think about Zenyatta and like, they released Zenyatta and thought it was okay for him to have 150 hit points. But Widowmaker just killed him as well, because like, where the damage, she could just kill him. Zenyatta was actually, like, unplayably bad at launch. It was a dark time. Dark time. So we're after Widowmaker again. She clearly doesn't have her hook shot, so there's nothing she can do to get away from us, and we just killed her. We've been nano boosted. We do have Primal Rage. Good self-control to not Primal Rage when you get nano boosted, because the nano boosted Primal Rage is not very good. Just Winston is better nano boosted than Primal Rage. So we do still have Primal Rage, um, which is a cool ultimate. Did they change anything right there? I think people were still respawning. No, nope, still have Widowmaker and Genji, so on. Uh, this is quite surprising that the Widowmaker has stayed on Widowmaker, honestly, because I feel like we've been bullying her constantly this entire time. She spent a lot of time running away from us this game. So we're trying to be a little bit on the sneaky side. Did I just hear Reinhardt ult? Yes, yes I did. So, things are not going to be going well for our team right now, and indeed, by the time we get round here, a lot of our team are already dead. Um, we do kill Widowmaker again, so 
Feels good, man. That's the thing with uh, doing that kind of action, is it did remove us from the fight for a long period of time, and then by the time we got back to the fight, it was already over, because half our team was dead. So, yeah, it can, uh, it can be bad. So I, I do think that there's uh, justification for using Primal Rage right now, because it's actually been so long since our team died that they're going to be getting close back right back right now. So if we use Primal Rage right now, they'll actually regroup on us. Whereas if we die right here, they're getting back right as we're dying. So we end up uh, sta being staggered compared to them. Was there a way we just like get out alive realistically? Because we did all this. That's cool. We killed her. Jump up here. Oh no, she's there. She didn't know we were there. It might have been, because she wasn't looking at us, we would have probably been better off not shooting her as we were landing, because she might not have noticed that we were here if we didn't attack her, and then that would have made getting out a lot easier. Um, we messed up the jump. That's the problem. Okay, we if we jumped upstairs, we probably could have actually gotten out, but we messed it up and bonked our head, so we came right back down again. Also feels bad. I do think it would have also been justified in using Primal Rage right there, just because otherwise we end up getting staggered, which is not great based off of where the... Like, they're getting real close to the end of the checkpoint, so being staggered right now is pretty bad. I mean, being staggered in general is bad, but particularly right now. Uh, so Bridget's being bullied by Coalescence right now, so we can help finish bullying her to death as well. Widowmaker's up there, we're after Widowmaker yet again, Widowmaker's dead again. Easy peasy. I'm, I am surprised she stayed Widowmaker this long, because we have bullied her a lot. Whatever, her choice. So we really should have just jumped back onto the payload because it's getting so close to the end of this checkpoint. We could have jumped on the payload. It's getting so close. Uh, somebody stops it, so we actually get to walk up to it. But like, we should have jumped on the payload because like we're we're the team's main tank. We need to be more concerned with making sure the payload doesn't get pushed. So. We end up jumping, like, we jump out, then use Primal Rage as we're jumping out, which is a little awkward, because then we just immediately jump right back in again. Which basically means we just didn't use our jumps as efficiently as we could have, because we could have, like, just, like, jumped on them Primal Rage and then jumped again right afterwards and done, like, big boy damage, basically. So we did not super efficient use of the jumps to jump out and immediately jump right back in again. I mean... It doesn't ultimately matter that much, but... Ooh, ooh, is, uh, ah, ah, you hate to see it happen. You hate to see it happen. We, we should have just given up after we bashed our head on the wall. Like, at that point, he's going to get to the health kit, and it's going to be scary. Uh, we could have used our bubble way sooner as well. We ended up uh, taking a lot of damage because we didn't use our bubble. Um, granted, you don't want to have to use your bubble if you're just fighting Genji. But we ended up taking like a real big chunk of damage because we didn't use it. But after we bashed our head, it was like, it was not so feasible to kill Genji anymore and I would have just given up. Um, I'm not that, I'm not, as a person, I'm not that committal though. So, you know, uh, that might be my problem. So I've managed to get to the third checkpoint. It's not the end of the world. Dorado, one of those maps you can feasibly win on any of the checkpoints. So it's hardly the end of the world. Uh, especially if you lose momentum partway through this checkpoint, it ends up being real hard to regain it. We should absolutely not jump in right now, because two people are currently dead. So we're jumping into a 4v6 right now, and nothing else is happening, so they just burst us to death before we can get back out again. We just needed to wait for the rest of our team to regroup, because we just jumped in 4v6. And we and, and then that ends up making it worse, because then the rest of the team is 3v6, and it's easier for them to die, and now like, oh, it continues. Okay, so, uh, hmm. could we have, uh, you know, because you can sort of react to this. Could we have done it here? And eh, not really. Because it, um, I thought he might have done it, like, from the top of the payload, which would have given us time to react, but no, nah, he did it on the ground. Um, you can't really react and put the bubble down 
to block Earth Shatter, you kind of need to, like, predict that it's coming. And granted, we haven't seen him use Earth Shatter in a really long time, so it was not unfeasible to uh, predict that he would use it in that position. But you can't really react to it unless he's going to jump from a high place to use it. You kind of, you do need to predict it. Could have feasibly predicted it from there, seeing as we hadn't seen him use it in such a long time. Uh, the, the, but, like, by that point, things were already not going great anyway, so it might not have even mattered. Good old classic Moira play of the game. So, honestly, like, that's pretty grim that we did 20% of the team's damage and it's uh, 5k. Like, that's, that's a little bit on the grim side uh, for how long that round went. So, there was a question in the email, and the question is basically centered around... Uh, Oh, you, you, um, actually, uh, there's a request at the end to check the recommended videos. So let's do that real quick before we get into the email. I didn't notice that part until just then. Cancel. What we got? Uh, we got Northern Lion again. I like Northern Lion. I do not watch Super Bunny Hop. Don't know who that is. Uh, 10 craziest out of bounds discoveries in games. That's something I would watch. That's something I'm probably going to watch after I finish doing this, in fact. So that there's that. I do like Dungeons and Dragons. I do also follow Bear Taffy. I don't know who this is, but you know, Slay the Spire. So I guess the YouTube just basically goes, yeah, close enough. So it's pretty on the ball. You know, it's, I like most of these things. This is, I haven't watched this, but I would watch that. So great job, YouTube. You've actually fucking figured it out for once. Great job, great job. Um, let's see. So in the email, it uh, says, did I bully or was I doing enough to counter Widowmaker this game? Which, you know, did I bully Widowmaker enough? Yeah, I think we bully Widowmaker enough. Like, I was surprised she stayed on Widowmaker for as long as she did because I felt like, she didn't really get to have much fun during that game. She spent a lot of time trying to run away from us. So yeah, I think we did enough to counter the Widowmaker. And then the other part of that is just any general advice on countering Widowmaker as Winston. So uh, one of the big ones was the thing like the grappling hook right at the start is if you see Widowmaker use a grappling hook, that basically means she can't get away from you. So if you see Widowmaker use her grappling hook, and you have your jump. If you jump on her right then and there, she can't use her grappling hook to run away from you, which makes it a lot easier to kill the Widowmaker. Um, like right at the start, she could have jumped down to her team, which we would probably not have followed her down into unless she was really close to dead at the time anyway, um, if we jumped on her immediately. But they have, a, they have a much harder time running away from you without the grappling hook. So if you see the Widowmaker use a grappling hook to get into position, you should try and jump on her while the grappling hook is on cooldown. Um, I'll say the big one, because, like, other than that, you're basically just trying to get to Widowmaker. Um, you can, you can do, you can flank to try and get around the side of her, take her by surprise, but we already did that at one point, so you probably know about that one, um, on Dorado, where we went, like, around the second floor and jumped on her from behind. She didn't, she didn't know we were coming. We got on her and mostly killed her before she even knew what the fuck. Um, something a lot of Winston players, uh, will have trouble with, this is pretty common question is um what do i do if the widowmaker or the hanzo is playing around their team and like basically what if the enemy team is working together and protecting each other what do i do then because i can't really jump into six people without dying so at that point you need to either play like really cautiously and just wait until somebody goes off by themselves because like eventually the widowmaker the hanzo whatever are going to go off by themselves because they're going to eventually they're going to want to get into an advantageous position like high ground probably that the rest of their team won't be able to follow them to like eventually they're going to do that and then you can jump on them once they do stray away otherwise uh you can do sort of what we did which is basically flanking but without immediately jumping in on them which is basically you get behind them 
and you harass them from the beh behind. You basically run up behind them and tickle them and go, ha ha, I'm back here now. <laughs> and then you disappear for a bit and you come back and you keep kind of doing that kind of thing. Basically like harassing them because that way you're splitting the enemy team's focus. Like they have to pay attention to you because they know Winston's behind them and they know Winston jumping on the back line like will kill the backliners if they don't do anything. So they have to focus on you, but they also have to focus on everything that's happening at the front line as well. So if they're like sitting around with the Widowmaker and Hanzo protecting each other, you can kind of like come up from behind them and just basically try and pull the team in two different directions. And then that's more likely to make them eventually split up and go out of position from each other. And then that gives you the opportunity to jump on them. That's because that's probably like the most common question I see from D.Va and Widowmaker, uh, D.Va and Winston players rather, is what do I do if people are protecting them? And that's basically what you do. You either pay really passively and wait extra long or you try and flank and basically pull the enemy team apart from each other. Um, can I think about anything else? Um, that's pretty much all I can think of, really. Um, if you have Primal Rage, like if you feel like you really need to kill the Widowmaker, or um, if you have Primal Rage and you kind of just want to engage a team fight, um, if you're gonna jump on the Widow, so, if you jump on her, and she has a grappling hook, she's gonna grapple away from you. But, Primal Rage refreshes your jump cooldown. So, if you're gonna engage a fight in the near future, and you want this Widowmaker dead also, you can jump on the Widowmaker, taser, do all that, then she's gonna grapple away from you to, like, another rooftop or something. Then you can just follow her with Primal Rage, kill her, and then Primal Rage lasts for a pretty fucking long time, as far as ultimates go. So you can then go on to just, like, shove the rest of the team around however you so please. Um, there's nothing really wrong with using Primal Rage to kill somebody, especially if you can then also, like, continue to fight other people afterwards. So, if you're gonna start a fight in the near future and you really want that Widow dead, you can use Primal Rage to kill her and then use the rest of it to, like, initiate the fight. Um, it'll be a little bit harder to disperse the rest of them, but... You'll have killed somebody right at the start of the fight, which is usually the most you can ask for, really, from using an ultimate. Is like, I killed somebody or one or two people really quickly at the start of the fight. Um, I can't really think of anything else. It's uh, overall, like, countering Widowmaker as Winston is fairly straightforward. Um, it's, it's just that, like, if the enemy team is sitting close together, people usually start to struggle more. Um... And I don't feel like we really had any trouble bullying Widowmaker, so I feel like you've probably got a pretty good idea overall. So, anyway, thank you very much for watching if you did. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask, I'm more than happy to answer. If you haven't already, you can join our Discord and ask more and ask questions more directly and have a conversation about them, or just shitpost with us, and I hope you found the video helpful. Brief, brief aside, I just realized, like, after I finished recording, that it not only did it recommend something I, somebody I don't know, I don't know this person, I don't particularly like Player Unknown's Battleground, but then it also decided to advertise to me the mobile version as well. Even on top of everything else, it's like, you want to watch some uh, mobile Player Unknown's Battlegrounds? No. No, actually, I don't, interestingly enough. So, great job, YouTube. Great job.